Can I hit that is? Um, no, but it sounds extremely death metal. <laughs> it's uh, defleshed the Under the Blade album from 1997, Invasion Records. Oh, okay. I really like it. It's a good album. I've got Parkway Drive here, an Australian death metal band as well. Um, as I Lay Dying, have you heard of them? Uh, no. I don't think so. Have you heard of Raised Fist? No. Oh, come on. You say you're into heavy metal and you haven't heard of any of these guys? I'm not, I didn't say I was he into heav heavy metal. Didn't you say to me at one stage you're into heavy metal? No. <laughs> it wasn't me. I'm into some, I'm into rock. Alternative. This is a good album by Raised Fist. Yes, that is one band that I've heard of. <laughs> oh, so good. I love it. I have to get up in like five hours, so I probably should go to bed. Oh, that's no good. Yeah. Have you heard this one? sort of thing I won't keep you I just want to say I love you very much and you know I think you can be brilliant and I really want you to follow your dreams and if that's music I think you need to start researching it and looking into places and checking it all out and see how it works and where they teach things and you know you need to find a place that teaches what you want to learn and yeah. you know what sort of thing and I you know just really want to encourage you well, thank, thanks for being there for me. I appreciate your support. I mean, it means a lot to me to have your support. You know, it's either get a bachelor's degree in, like, literature, or, or not literature, but, um, like, business or economy, I don't know, e economics, or... Or do this and I don't really feel like I fit in with I've tried off office jobs before for a number of different things accounting um, material management and I just can't, I don't fit in with the people there I'm not that type of a person I'm an artist so I just need to follow my what I want to do I need to follow my passion So, anyway, yeah, I better go to bed. My mom's picking me up at 9.45. Well, 
Oh. Where are you going to? Oh, oh thanks for the hugs. <laughs> um, we're going to um, visit my sister in prison, and then we're visiting her friend's uh, brother who's dying. So it's going to be an awesome day. Sister in prison for? Um, she's in prison for multiple counts of theft and multiple counts of uh, identity theft. Oh. She basically stole my sister Emily's identity. That's not good. Among other people's. So. Well, that's what could be happening to me with all my identity documents that have been stolen. So we're being very careful, you know, to make sure no one else accesses me and, you know, all that sort of stuff. I'm looking for online profiles, which wouldn't be me. So, you know, um, yeah, not good. Yeah. How long is she in for? Um, let's see, she went in in April of 2013, she gets it, I think, 2016, I think, if she gets off on good behavior. She'll probably end up just doing it again. Oh, uh, probably. If people they don't learn, apparently, I've seen documentaries on Nat Geo and stuff like that on this sort of thing, and they just keep doing it. It's the only thing they know. Yeah, she... she you know? She's been doing it since she was 10, so I don't think she's really going to learn. Yeah. Which is sad. But, I don't know. I guess according to my mom, she's become a, a health nut, and now she's super skinny. Yeah. Which Lots of work. anorexia. People work out in those sort of places to pass the time, and they come out, and they end up in serious health problems. So, you know, I've seen documentaries on these sort of things. I'll, I'll say goodnight and let you go to sleep. Yeah. We'll talk to you tomorrow. All right. I I'm love you, Grace. Back. Sleep well. Love you too, John. And uh, follow your heart, babe. If that music thing is really your passion, then follow it. Don't let anyone else tell you you should do commerce or, you know, whatever you said your dad wanted you to do. You need to follow what's best for you. Yeah, I don't, so, I can't listen others, right just, say, just say to them, look, I know you want me to do this, but it doesn't feel right. Just say to them, I'm going to go with my gut. This is what I want to do. And they can just, you know, deal with it, Grace. Because you'll end up showing them why you're doing it. Yeah. But they'll see you brilliant and they'll go, I had no idea. But... When you make the big time, they'll just go, I was wrong. She should be doing this. All right, oops. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, you sleep well, Angel, and we'll talk tomorrow. Okay. I love yeah. you, babe. Sleep well, Angel. You too, babe. I love you. Sit mm. your plum, sleep it up, okay? Huh? You have to a few hours. Sit your alarm, okay? I will. You don't want to sleep in. I, I won't. My mom will call me if I end up sleeping in anyway. But I'll, I'll right. set an alarm. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Love you. Talk tomorrow. I love you too, babe. Have a good night. You too. Talk Bye. Tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> Yeah, I guess um, I might as well do a diary entry while I'm sitting here. So um, half of it was kind of recording my conversation with John.
and the other half was is going to be kind of giving an update on things. Um, silly glasses. Um, basically, I've come. I mean, I've come to a lot of understanding with things in my life, and. Uh, For a very long time, I had no idea who I was. Who? What, what am I doing here? Like, what am I meant to do? What am I supposed to do in this life? You know, like, that's what I'm, that's what I've been wondering is the whole thing with that. And, uh, as of late, I had kind of a revelation um, in kind of two parts. Um, one, oh, the date today is, uh, Sunday, November 23rd, 4.26 a.m. I have to get up in, in about four and a half hours and go take a nice long-ass day with my mom. Which I'm really not looking forward to. But anyway, as of late, I had a couple of revelations. And one wouldn't have gone without the other, really. Especially without the first one. I mean, with the second half. Well, first of all, I dated. I went on a, well, I met a guy. Um, a few weeks back now, and, uh, you know, I'd been going through a huge, uh, ditch in my life, and, uh, basically I met this guy at the, probably at the bottom of it, and, uh, I mean, it was his choice to not even want to deal with me, but, you know, I was really nice, I told you about that, I guess, yeah, um, but anyway, it didn't work out, and I, we had a conversation, and he said that, you know, you need to get rid of your negative energy, I know it's not you, it's something else that's making, you know, that's, that needs, you know, you need to just try to channel it out, and, uh, release it, you know, help really get it, until after, well, I was going through a really hard time financially, you know, for the millionth time, of course. This web, I uh, thought everything was fine, and then all of a sudden I get a call in the morning, at 10 o'clock in the morning, from my landlady, or from my leasing agent office saying that my check bounced on the 10th of the month even though I turned my check in on the 3rd but they said that it bounced on the 10th and then they called me on the 13th um, they had apparently according to them they said they posted a bunch of, of notices on my door and they put things in my mail never got any of that any of that None of it. If I did, I would have told the truth on here, because nobody even listens to this. So, anyway, I got really upset about it. Um, uh, I only had enough to cover the base rent, which was nine twenty-five. They wanted the full amount. They wanted, like, the $1,200. And I was like, dude, I don't have that much. So they compromised with me, and I was like... Went to the um, QFC, went to QFC, got the money order. Whew, man, I'm tired. Went to QFC, got the money order. Um, I got so pissed off on the way over to the leasing office that I crumpled them both up. And then I threw the balls of money orders on, their, on her desk. And she's like, anyway, 
It was just a huge disaster. And it just, basically the whole point of the thing is that she asked me some very personal questions that I'm just not willing to, to talk to about a fucking leasing office lady. And I was really pissed off and, like, really upset because my emotions have been all over the place. Um, so basically she asked me, look, I've been uh, getting help from an agency called Sunrise Mental Health and I've been going to counseling appointments and stuff and trying to get on to their housing, housing assistance voucher program. And then, uh, anyway, it was just ridiculous. Um, the whole thing was just ridiculous. She asked me what kind of agency, and I was like, it's just an agency. And then she's like, what brought you to this agency? And I was, that's when I just kind of blew up, and I was like, well, my friend died. And then she's like, oh, no, that's terrible, like sarcastic I'm sorry and I didn't even say anything for most of the rest of the thing that we had to sit through while she was filling shit out and then she's just like well how did your friend die and then that, that was the last straw I was just like heart attack and then all, I, all my respect for her went out the window after that and then as soon as she got everything done and everything and we were all done I got up and I left and she said bye Grace and I didn't even say bye so anyway I shouldn't have even said anything when I saw her the next time but I knew I had no money <clears throat> and uh, I was just like dude this is fucking ridiculous you know, I'm paying $265 late fees because they failed to notify me that I had my check balance like 10 days ago. You know, I was to know they just didn't hang on to it for a while and then be like, well, we're going to send her a notice now. Or just forget to send, I don't know. Like, I don't even know what happened. Honestly, how can, how can it? not reach my mailbox or my door. That's what baffles me, so. She, uh, anyway, it was a huge mess. It's a, been a huge mess. And, uh, basically, I sent her really angry emails. It's just been, my emotions have been really hard, raw lately. Really, really, really raw. And, uh, yeah. So, anyway, I, um, decided to I went up to my dad's and I decided to go into some of his drawers and look, see if there were any court papers or anything from when I was a child. Um, or any records just to see what happened and I finally found some I found some significant paperwork I mean it wasn't a huge amount but it was you know it had all the info I needed in it you know all the, all my teachers saying that I was a bright child that I had great potential you know I was in the top 2% of my class I was in yeah, top 2% of my class, top 1 or 2% of my class, and I was nominated for the Gifted Program or Aiming High at the age of 10 or 11, you know, and that I was several grades ahead uh, in intellectuality. And, you know, I was... It makes me sad because, you know, now I'm making pizzas and I don't want this to be my life forever. But obviously what I have been doing hasn't been working either. 
what I've been doing in the past hasn't been working. You know, trying to do these stupid jobs with these stupid people that don't understand, you know, that don't understand anything. <clears throat> Except I don't, you know, like Panasonic, you know, all those jobs, I just could you know, people are clicky and, anyway, um, and then I read some allegations and some notes and proof about, like, what I did, what I did and said as a child. I was such a troubled child. I was a huge problem child at school. And, uh, yeah, it was just bad. But the one thing that made me cry for three hours was I was so depressed and so miserable that I said, I told, I told somebody, I can't remember who, but and I block this out, obviously. But I said, I want to die and be up in heaven where, I want, where I'll be happy. And um, that was said at about age six or seven. It broke my heart to see that. To see that much unhappiness, you know, to see a child who, you know, to see a child who's that unhappy, you know, that makes me so sad. Anyway, you know, that's what happened. And I spent, um, I spent the next three hours just on my way home driving home from Lummi, crying my eyes out. I, I was so raw in my emotions. I just could not. Um, I couldn't stop crying. I, I could not stop crying. But um, it, was, it was a very harsh reality. Very harsh thing to read. And I don't remember much good from my childhood. I know it's, I'm never going to forget what happened in my childhood, but I have to learn how to live, how to move above it or I'm never going to get there. So I posted something on Facebook yesterday, you know, I was indecisive and I was like, should I play it safe or should I, um, so I just play it safe and just get a bachelor's degree in something practical or or should I follow my dreams and go into the music mixing go to music mixing school and every one person told me to follow my dreams and so you know I think I will it makes me feel happy to not to uh, think about it you know to be able to follow my passion and I know that this is my last chance. I don't have any other chances. This is the last chance to get my shit together before I can settle down and have children and have family. I can't continue this. You know, following my dad and Kim's advice on, you know, going to medical billing and coding school when uh when they told me to do that I, I did it and it never amounted to anything so it was just a waste of money and time i never got a job because the stupid recession hit and then um yeah that's that was pretty bad so Anyway, that's the end of that today. I'm going to bed. So, right, it's 4.44, so I better go to bed. So, anyway, talk to you maybe later, or I don't know when, but we'll see. All right, good night.